All right, so now uh, we're going to look at CSS reset. So all browsers come with default formatting, and we could uh, prove that. You know, so we never know what we never know where our code's going to run, and uh, it's cross-browser, cross-platform compatibility is what we think about. And so our code might run on a desktop, it might run on a tablet or a phablet or a phone, or it might run in Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer or I or Microsoft Edge, all right, there's all kinds of different browsers, all kinds of different screen sizes. And so we don't know where our code's going to run. And, uh, and by default, you know, um, our, uh, I'll create a, another folder here. By default, our um, browsers will apply formatting. And we can just prove that to ourselves with h1 h1 that has a sibling that's h2 that has a sibling that's h3 that has a sibling that's h4 that has a sibling that's h5 that has a sibling that's h6. Come on. No? Huh? Uh, there we go. And kind of weird how it did it. I don't know why it did it like that. But... There we go. So those are all of our headings. We could use any one of those headings, H1 through H6. And when I preview this in uh, Chrome, it looks like that. And when I preview it in Firefox, it looks like that, right? And so you could kind of compare it. Well, that looks pretty dang similar, right? Like same font and everything, same size. I don't see much jump there. Same space apart. But anyhow, um, the idea with the reset is I'm going to reset everything, zero it out, and start building my code from the ground up. And so to reset everything, we could just do our own reset and uh, create a style sheet. We just set we just set things to zero, right? We just zero it out. And so link, main, and uh, so I do like hey my HTML page. Body h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, h6. All these things that I'm using, I'd say uh, content padding is zero, border is zero, margin is zero, and uh, and then I could look at this page. And uh, okay, cool. Took away that, and I could say um, how would I zero out the size of all of that padding border margin and I could just say um, font size is 16 pixels <coughs> one two three four five six and uh, font weight is I think uh, normal and what is normal that's a very good question I think it's 400 So now a lot's been stripped away. And then I could say this is what I want my H1 to look like. And I could start building it up the way I want it to appear. And so there's a, I just want to check out font weight MDN to make sure that I said 400 is normal, make sure that's right. Normal. I'll tell somewhere what normal is. You've always wondered, Sam is 400. Um, so there's a history of CSS resets. People have created to do this, but you know, if you understand the concept, no big deal, and you could create them yourself. And um, so there's the Eric Meyer reset, and then there's another one called Normalize, and another one called Sanitize. And so those are Eric Meyer's name that used to be big in web dev. Web dev has kind of become the um, the child actor that everybody loved when they were young and now they kind of grew up and they're a little bit they're actually better than when they were young but like people are like but you're no longer Shirley Temple you're no longer young and cute right. you know but even if they used to be a brat when they were young and hard to work with right they used to be a brat and hard to work with and now they're like totally like tempered by life and mellow and really nice people to be around. But people are like, yeah, I don't care for you anymore. You no longer are young and cute. Like that's HTML and CSS. 
like it was a brat to work with when it was young it was hard you know and now it's grown up and it's tempered and it's easy to work with but it's just not as popular because it's no longer fresh and new and young and cute that's a pretty good analogy but uh, Eric Meyer used to be like in the 2005 to 2010 a big name in HTML and CSS and um, so anyhow and then I just created this one a McLeod reset and so if you look at the CSS on the McLeod reset we have all these elements and then you know zero out margin padding and border and font inherit so inherits the browser's font properties so let's try that up here you know instead of I did font weight 16 and that let's do, do font inherit font inherit and that means they're all going to inherit the same font from their parent, their parent, their parent, up the tree, all the way to HTML. So they're all going to have the same font size. And so with font inherit, all right, now they're all zeroed out. I like that better. Boom. Right. Well, each one, it's going to apply this to each one. Okay, that's all zeroed out. My font, I inherit it. Well, who's my parent? Body. Well, where did body get it from? Well, who's body's parent? HTML. And where did HTML get it from? That's the root. It doesn't go any farther up than that. So they're all inheriting because this is the ultimate parent. We've listed everything. They're all inheriting from HTML, which is font weight, font size 16 pixels, font weight uh, 400 normal. So other resets. Uh, vertical align specifies the vertical alignment of an inline element is baseline. Box sizing border box. So as we add padding and border, it doesn't increase the size of our element. Line height is one. Specifies the height of line boxes within the element. Border radius is zero. Uh, outline is none. No outline around anything. Color inherit. All right, so in, in, inherit the colored parent. Ordered list and unordered list. List style, none. So that means no bullets. List style, none, no bullets. All right, button, anything that's a button. Cursor turns into the pointer. And background color, transparent. Block quote and queue, no quotes. Table, border spacing, zero. Uh, no spacing between cells. And borders are collapsed. Border collapse, collapse. Input, select, and progress. Appearance, none. And SVG, uh, width and height, 1.9 M's, and fill current color. So you don't have to understand what all those do. By the end of the semester, you'll have a good idea of what each of those do. But you, the idea you just get here is like we're zeroing everything out. And so to include that in your, so I recommend just using mine. And you can look through these other ones if you want and see how they did stuff. And I think some of them are, wow, just way too complex. You don't need all that. Um, but to include that, you know, in an HTML page, all right, I just have link to that CSS. That's going to run all this CSS, zero everything out, and then if I wanted to, I could link to main. And then I'm going to build everything up. And this runs in programming, there's a concept called control flow. And so control flow, we asked people when we were hiring for a faculty position uh, recently, we ask people, explain control flow to us. And a lot of the applicants can explain it. And I know that we're just like comp, we're just like tech light. We're not comp sci, we're like IS or IT. And, um, and so that's basically, you know, and we're a community college, it's first year, second year programming. Generally speaking, in IT, IS, you don't have programming. For whatever reason, it's where it ends up in our school. We're an anomaly, which is kind of cool because I studied business and econ, but I get to teach it <laughs> and I enjoy it. And I don't have the, the deep background of comp sci. Anyhow, point being, control flow is uh, how does a computer read the code? Like, what is the flow of control through the code? What is the flow through the code? And um, we have a way of reading books. And so in our culture, we start at the front, and we read left to right, top to bottom, right?
right, left to right, top to bottom. And that's how we read a book. A computer starts at the top and reads straight down. Line, 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 line. And it hits statements. And statements tell it to go do something. So it starts, it reads this, reads this, reads this, gets here. And then it goes and it reads all of that document. And it sets all those settings. And then it goes to the next one and sets all those settings. So those are being read in order. That's the main thing you need to know. Anecdotally, control flow is not only sequential, which I just described, everything is read in sequence, one after the other, but when you're in programming, you could also have control flow, which is conditional, based upon some sort of logic, like an if statement or a switch statement, where you have cases. So you could have sequential, uh, conditional, based upon some logic, and you could also have iterative, a loop, like do this this many times for every individual in the class to do this. So that's control flow. All right. Anyhow, that's a reset, and you can just grab my reset and uh, include that at the beginning of all your files, and it'll zero everything out. And if you want to get that code, and you're watching this online somewhere, you could go to uh, goes to 11 at GitHub, and you could go to repositories, and it's the HTML, CSS, bootcamp repository. And we were just looking at the CSS reset folder. And uh, last thing I'll say is if you want to know the outline for the entire thing we were just looking at, just to help you out wherever you are in the world, that's why I'm a teacher. Go to this URL, and it'll take you to the course outline. You can take the entire course at creativecommons.com, which is awesome. So everything we're learning in this class is right here, how to create a website. Uh, cool. So that's our resets.